Hedeby. Hedeby, Old Norse Hidehaber, German Hitabu, was an important Viking age, 8th to the 11th centuries, trading settlement near the southern end of Jutland Peninsula, now in the schleswig flensburg district of Schleswig-Holstein, Germany. It is the most important archaeological site in Schleswig-Holstein. The settlement developed as a trading center at the head of a narrow, navigable inlet known as the Schlei, which connects to the Baltic Sea. The location was favorable because there is a short portage of less than 15 kilometers to the Trine River, which flows into the Eider with its North Sea estuary, making it a convenient place where goods and ships could be pulled on a corduroy road over land for an almost uninterrupted seaway between the Baltic and the North Sea and avoid a dangerous and time consuming circumnavigation of Jutland, providing Hedeby with a role similar to later Lubeck. Hedeby was the second largest Nordic town during the Viking Age, after Upakra in present-day southern Sweden, the city of Schleswig was later founded on the other side of the Schlei. Hedeby was abandoned after its destruction in 1066. Hedeby was rediscovered in the late 19th century and excavations began in 1900. The Hatabu Museum was opened next to the site in 1985. The Old Norse name Hidehaber simply translates to Heath Settlement, Heith or Heath and Ber equals Yard. Settlement, village, town. The name is recorded in numerous spelling variants. Sources from the 9th and 10th century AD also attest to the name Slyas Thorpe and Slyasich, cf. Thorpe versus Witch, and the town of Schleswig still exists 3 km north of Hedeby. However, Ethelbert claimed in his Latin translation of the Anglo Saxon Chronicle that the Saxons used Schleswig and the Danes Hathaby to refer to the same town. Hedeby is first mentioned in the Frankish Chronicles of Einhard, 804, who was in the service of Charlemagne, but was probably founded around 770. In 808 the Danish king Godfred, Lot. Godofridus, destroyed a competing Slav trade center named Rarik, and it is recorded in the Frankish Chronicles that he moved the merchants from there to Hedeby. This may have provided the initial impetus for the town to develop. The same sources record that Godfred strengthened the Danavirk, an earthen wall that stretched across the south of the Jutland Peninsula. The Danavirk joined the defensive walls of Hedeby to form an east west barrier across the peninsula, from the marshes in the west to the Schlei and let Leden Ginto the Baltic in the east. The town itself was surrounded on its three landward sides, north, west, and south, by earthworks. At the end of the 9th century, the northern and southern parts of the town were abandoned for the central section. Later, a 9 meter 29 feet, high semicircular wall was erected to guard the western approaches to the town. On the eastern side, the town was bordered by the innermost part of the Schlei and led in the Bay of Hadebeyer Nor. Hedeby became a principal marketplace because of its geographical location on the major trade routes between the Frankish Empire and Scandinavia, north-south, and between the Baltic and the North Sea, east-west. Between 800 and 1000 the growing economic power of the Vikings led to its dramatic expansion as a major trading center. The following indicate the importance achieved by the town. A Swedish dynasty founded by Olaf the Brash is said to have ruled Hedeby during the last decades of the 9th century and the first part of the 10th century. This was told to Adam of Bremen by the Danish king Sven Estridsson, and it is supported by three runestones found in Denmark. Two of them were raised by the mother of Olaf's grandson Sigtrid Nupesson. The third runestone, discovered in 1796, is from Hedeby, the Stone of Eric. It is inscribed with Norwegian Swedish runes. It is, however, possible that Danes also occasionally wrote with this version of the younger Futhark. Life was short and crowded in Hedeby. The small houses were clustered tightly together in a grid, with the east west streets leading down to jetties in the harbour. People rarely lived beyond 30 or 40 and archaeological research shows that their later years were often painful due to crippling diseases such as tuberculosis. Yet makeup for men and rights for women provides surprises to the modern understanding. Al Tartoshi, a late 10th century traveler from Al-Andalus, provides one of the most colorful and often quoted descriptions of life in Hedeby. Al Tartoshi was from Cordoba in Spain, which had a significantly more wealthy and comfortable lifestyle than Hedeby. While Hedeby may have been significant by Scandinavian standards, Al Tartoshi was unimpressed. The town was sacked in 1050 by King Harald Hardrada of Norway during a conflict with King Sven II of Denmark. He set the town on fire by sending several burning ships into the harbor, the charred remains of which were found at the bottom of the Schlei during recent excavations. A Norwegian skald, quoted by Snorra Sturluson, describes the sack as follows. 
In 1066 the town was sacked and burned by West Slavs. Following the destruction, Hedeby was slowly abandoned. People moved across the Schlei Inlet, which separates the two peninsulas of Angelman Schwanson, and founded the town of Schleswig. After the settlement was abandoned, rising waters contributed to the complete disappearance of all visible structures on the site. It was even forgotten where the settlement had been. This proved to be fortunate for later archaeological work at the site. Archaeological work began at the site in 1900 after the rediscovery of the settlement. Excavations were conducted for the next 15 years. Further excavations were carried out between 1930 and 1939. Archaeological work on the site was productive for two main reasons that the site had never been built on since its destruction some 840 years earlier, and that the permanently waterlogged ground had preserved wood and other perishable materials. After the Second World War, in 1959, Archaeological work was started again and has continued intermittently ever since. The embankments surrounding the settlement were excavated, and the harbor was partially dredged, during which the wreck of a Viking ship was discovered. Despite all this work, only 5% of the settlement, and only 1% of the harbor, has as yet been investigated. The most important finds resulting from the excavations are now on display in the adjoining Hatabu Museum. In 2005 an ambitious archaeological reconstruction program was initiated on the original site. Based on the results of archaeological analysis, exact copies of some of the original Viking houses have been built. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.